Good morning, and welcome to Kuala Lumpur in my office here at the Global Support Center. My name is Scott Tier, and I'm Secretary General of the World Organization of the Scout Movement. World Scouting serves somewhere between 40 and 60 million young people around the world. And why do I say between 40 and 60 million young people? It's because we're currently going country by country and doing a census survey of exactly how many young people are involved in scouting in every one of our member countries. We know we have at least 40 million, but we think we may be much closer to 60 million. We'll have those exact figures in another couple of months time. Those 40 to 60 million young people are organized in what we call national scout organizations. And the Boy Scouts of America is one of those national scout organizations. But there are a total of 163 national scout organizations around the world. And those 163 national scout organizations represent some 223 different countries and territories. A good example is the Boy Scouts of America. In addition to serving the United States of America, you also serve Puerto Rico, America Samoa, Guam, and some other American protectants. So therefore, we have 163 national scout organizations, but 223 countries and territories that are involved. And there is a professional staff that supports the world organization. It's referred to as the World Scout Bureau and it consists of about 120 employees in nine different offices around the world. Two of those offices are called Global Support Centers for the World Organization, and we have one here in Kuala Lumpur, and we have a smaller one in Geneva. The Kuala Lumpur office has about 32 employees, whereas the Geneva office has only five or six. And then the other seven offices belong to our six regions. The European region, for instance, has two offices, one headquartered and one located in Geneva, and another one located in Brussels. Our Asia Pacific region, which is the largest region that we have, they serve some 32 million young people. It's headquartered in the Philippines, in a little, a little area just outside of Manila called Makati. The Inter-American region, which you're a member of, is headquartered in Panama City, Panama. Cairo and Egypt, serves as the headquarters of our Arab region, whereas Nairobi and Kenya serves as the headquarters for what we call the Africa Scout region. The region that is left is our newest region, the Eurasia region, and it's headquartered in Kiev. I need to take a little break right now because none of these videos are free and we have to have a little commercial. And today's commercial or today's video is brought to you by Uncle Scott's Instant Chicken Rice. That's right, you too can enjoy one of the Asian flavors that we have here in Malaysia, chicken rice. But this chicken rice is instant. You simply open the box stop, pour in a half a cup of water, give it a good shake, and it's ready to eat. Go to UncleScotts.com and order yours today. $5.95 fully delivered. But wait, order in the next 30 minutes and we'll throw in an extra box free. That's right, two boxes of Uncle Scott's chicken rice for only $5.95 delivered. You can't beat that deal. Again, go to UncleScott.com and order yours today. Thank you. People ask from time to time, what is your role as Secretary General besides pitching Uncle Scott's chicken rice? Well, actually, I have two roles. One is I am the Secretary General of the World Organization of the Scout Movement, the Secretariat of the 163 national scout organizations around the world but I also serve as Chief CEO, Chief Executive Officer of the World Scout Bureau, those 120 employees in the nine different locations that I mentioned earlier. And to obtain this position uh, was quite a competition. There was 120 applicants. And uh, I applied because uh, people from the BSA and from other parts of the world uh, said that it was probably uh, my turn, that I needed to bring uh, my 40 years of career experience from the Boy Scouts of America to the world organization. And as of March 2nd, I have enjoyed a 42-year professional career of scouting. And uh, I, in, in, in the hierarchy of things, I am Secretary General number five. But uh, I did join uh, scouting at the age of eight. 
56 years ago uh, as a Cub Scout. My mom and dad were very, very involved in scouting. And for me, I went the Order of the Earl, Summer Camp, Eagle Scout, all those things that you do. And you find that you have a passion, a passion to help young people when you want to do something. You want to do, uh, do as much as you can. And, and that's when I decided that maybe career scouting was for me. And it was a very difficult time uh, as I was at the university because I wanted to go into the ministry, but yet I had this pull, if you will, to try to at least consider career scouting. And finally one day I went home and told my parents that it was going to be career scouting. End of discussion. And later that night the pastor of our church and his wife came to dinner. And during dinner my dad just abruptly announced to, to Father Alex that I had chosen a, a career in scouting. And he clapped his hands together and said, Praise be to God, the church is one. So I took that as an indication that maybe the going into the ministry wasn't really what I should have done anyway. But career scouting has been my way of life and, uh, and I've certainly enjoyed it. And I think I brought some value uh, with me to the office of the Secretary General as the fifth Secretary General in, in world history. But what does World Scouting do? What, what does the World Scout Bureau do? And of course, our main mission is to support, uh, my offices are to support their six regional offices, the six regions that we have around the world because they are the, the rubber to meets the road. They're the ones that serve the National Scout organizations. So we, we support the regions to make sure that National Scout organizations are served. Though the Boy Scouts of America need service, absolutely not. But there are other National Scout organizations that need help. So what the Boy Scouts of America can do is then help provide some of that help that's needed. So in the Inter-American region, for instance, you were very instrumental in the Inter-American Leadership uh, Development uh, Training Program that just happened in Guatemala. We did two of them prior to Guatemala in Houston, Texas. But that's where the Boy Scouts of America can make a contribution to show smaller National Scout organizations, struggling National Scout organizations, what they might do to improve things. A new tool that we're using on a world level is called, what well, we, we nickname it GSAT, and it's a global assessment tool. It's much like your local council, quality council uh, checklist. We go into a National Scout organization with a checklist of things that they need to look at. And the items that we identify or that they identify that they need improvement, then they work on improving in those items and suddenly they find themselves in a position where they have the capacity to grow, the capacity to do new and better things. So again, not every National Scout organization of the 163 need help and support. But our job is to provide help and support and those that are struggling, those that need help, those that ask for help, those that don't need, know that they need help, but yet they do. And we get other National Scout organizations like the Boy Scouts of America to come in and help us make those things, uh, get those things corrected. Probably the biggest thing that people think about when they think about the World Organization is the World Scout Jamboree. And we just held one in Japan that was incredibly successful. But what's more exciting is that in 2019, the World Jamboree comes to the summit. And it's a joint venture between Scouts Canada, the Scout Association of Mexico, and the Boy Scouts of America. It's exciting and it's very, very important. And why is it important? To become a host of a World Scout Jamboree requires a lot of volunteers, requires a lot of financial support, and most of our national scout organizations around the world cannot do it. United Kingdom can, Sweden certainly could, Japan certainly could, the Boy Scouts of America can, and the Mexico together obviously can. But there are other National Scout organizations around the world that would love to hold a world jamboree, but they simply don't have the money or the volunteer capacity to do this. So what you're gonna leave behind at the end of 2019 is a blueprint. A blueprint of how National Scout organizations can come together, work together, and put on a World Scout Jamboree. And that gives smaller countries around the world the opportunity to get together, follow the blueprint that you set, and put on a Jamboree in the future. So the World Scout Jamborees, I think, in the future are, gonna, are guaranteed to happen. Another event that's quite popular is called the World Scout Moot. The next World Scout Moot is in 2017 in Iceland. 
And the Moot is much like a World Scout Jamboree, only it's for what we call the Rover Scouts. And in the United States, that would be Ventura Scouts over the age of 18. And the World Scout Moot uh, is about 2,500 to 3,000 young people that come together from around the world and do some high adventure camping. Uh, again, much like a Jamboree, but geared toward an older group of young people. So there's many things that we do around the world, many things that we do together. The Boy Scouts of America is certainly a leader in the world organization. You've always had someone from the Boy Scouts of America who's a member of the World Scout Committee. And the Boy Scouts of America pays the largest fee to be a member of the world organization. Now, what do I mean by fee? And that's uh, the income of the world organization, the Scout Movement, comes from basically two sources. Fees, about 60% of our income comes from fees. So the 163 national scout organizations around the world pay an annual membership fee to belong to WISM. And the Boy Scouts of America's fee is, of course, one of the is the largest. The other source of our income, the other 40% or so, comes from a annual grant from the World Scout Foundation. And many of you in your room may be, uh, may be members of the Baden-Powell Fellowship. And if you are, then you're a member of the Baden, of, of being a member of the Baden-Powell Fellowship means you're part of the World Scout Foundation and the income generated from that endowment fund comes to the World Scout organization as income. So about 60% of world fees and 40% in the World Scout Foundation grant. Before I close, I'd like to share with you what I tell young people around the world, and it has to do with our neckerchief. It doesn't matter uh, where you're at in the world, if, if you're at a scouting event, a scout wears a neckerchief. They can be in full uniform in an opening ceremony and they'll have their neckerchief on. They can be in a t-shirt and a swimsuit on their way to the lake to go swimming, they're gonna have their neckerchief on. The neckerchief is sort of their badge to show that they're a scout. And I often ask scouts why you think Maiden Pal made a neckerchief three-sided and that one side's longer than the other two sides. And I propose to them that the long side represents duty to God and duty to country from our scout oath and the two shorter sides mean duty to others and duty to self. So when a young person rolls his neckerchief or her neckerchief and puts it around their neck, they're literally wrapping themselves in the values found in our oath. Duty to God and country, duty to others, and duty to self. Once again, my name is Scott Tierra. I am a scout. I'm a messenger of peace and I'm proud to serve as your Secretary General. Have a good time at Philmont.